Hey, come on, sit down. How you doing? I'm Scott. I'm Ed. How you doing, Scott? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Well. Thank you. I'm from London in England. Right. Um, my girlfriend's from London. Yeah. So have you ever been? No. Oh, yeah, when I was little. But it's a good place. It's my favourite city, but Providence is quite nice as well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so um, I'm here at Brown University, and I have a tablecloth, and the tablecloth says, "Can you justify not being vegan?" Um, and so you sat down, and so I was wondering, what justifications do you have to not be vegan? Uh, oh, can I hold it? There? You can if you'd like. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> I, I have more of a question because I don't want to argue about like animal like whether or not you can kill animals because I feel like that comes to more of like a what you think is moral and what's not and uh, I, it'll just that's too hard to argue so I wanted to ask like what do you think so if we get rid of all animal farming mm -hmm. like what happens to the like millions of people that work in yeah. in farming agriculture and like I come from a community that's like dominated by it so it would like completely kill like millions of people lose their jobs right. and all that so what do you and i think this is a very important question and i think one thing that happens often in the vegan debate is there becomes some sort of a battle lines drawn where it's like vegans versus farmers or agriculture workers and vegans have you know we, th we think that farmers are animal abusers and such okay so i think that's a really important point to raise and so the first thing to consider bloody else is going to blow away, isn't it and the first thing to consider is i think that that many um this is going to be a generalization, so bear with me, that many farmers can switch to plant-based agriculture. And we see this particularly in the US with dairy industry a, a lot at the moment, is a lot of dairy industry um, or dairy farmers and, and, and um, industry officials are switching what they do into plant-based agriculture. Um, and so the, the problem then becomes, if for those who, who have that option and, and are, are, are on suitable land to kind of accommodate for, for arable farming, we then need to create a, an economic system that allows them to do so because you've got machinery and you've got equipment that allows you to produce animal products and it's not as simple as just swapping because it costs money and you've got to rent equipment etc so in the us but also in the uk where i'm from our government gives huge amounts of tax tax subsidies to animal agriculture to keep these products profitable and to drive the prices down for consumers and so last year the, the us government gave the dairy industry a, a one billion dollar bailout because the dairy industry is, is struggling at the moment um, and so this allowed them to recoup the costs from plant-based milks, but also from changing habits and, um, and, and things. And so I say keep these, these tax subsidies as they are and give them to animal farmers, but they're given to animal farmers with the incentive that they have to switch to plant-based agriculture. And that therefore means that they can spot families, they can spot the transition, and they also enter into what we would consider to be a um, kind of an ever-growing economy and look at plant-based farming. You know, it's something that all the trends are suggesting is going to go from strength to strength. So in terms of safeguarding financial, you know, um, future financial, financial ventures, it makes much more economic sense for them to do that. But I have to be fair, because some farmers do not have the means to switch to plant agriculture. Maybe their land isn't suitable. Um, maybe, you know, they live in an area, I guess in the UK a lot, sheep farmers, there's not so many sheep farmers here, but sheep farmers, you can graze sheep on hills, but you can't produce plants on hills. And so you can't make that transition so simply. And so what we need to do is we need to create a system that caters for farmers that can't just switch, right? And so there's a couple of options. Firstly, we've got to consider the shift to veganism is going to be very gradual. We're not going to be faced this problem tonight. We have many decades, presumably, to think of these solutions. And one of those solutions is something called vertical farming, which means that you can build a building. You could take any building here, theoretically, any kind of warehouse building in a city or outside of a city. And you can create a system of farming within sites. Um, and so what that does is that provides jobs, um, but it also creates a system of, of agriculture that is more sustainable, um, uses less water, uses less energy. You don't have to worry about invasive species, GMOs, pesticides, fertilizers. But this theoretically then, for those who cannot grow crops on the land that they use, we could create jobs in systems of vertical farming and employ people, uh, farmers from animal farming into those professions instead so that they still have a job within agriculture. It's just a more progressive and evolved form of agriculture. Yeah, so I think uh, my, my biggest problem with that is, is it obviously requires you forcing people to change their way of life and it comes back around to changing people because if they want to eat meat yeah. like someone like me yeah i if i want to eat meat i sh like in america like you know we all say freedom is our we tout freedom is our biggest principle and uh yes. i think that intrudes on that is and then especially intrudes on it when you are forcing people to change their occupation and learn something new and also forcing people to pay for that because you're forcing uh, it's gonna cost a lot of money a lot more money than than you might think I would imagine to especially with with vertical farming someone has to pay for these buildings someone ha like the farmer you can't uh, give these farmers uh, especially like cattle farmers that 
that their cattle grazes, like you said, like hilly land, and that that is, and you're saying you want to restore that to natural. What was it? Wasn't natural? Uh, yeah. Natural land, and so. Uh, okay, you, but you're, but, ta- you're stripping them of that land. But does a want? Okay, so we we talked about a want. Does a want provide justification for the action? Just just simply because we would like to do that and we enjoy the product of that, does that mean that the the consequence of that action is then justified? Well, no. But if the consequence isn't like a necessary evil. But so, but we would say that consuming animal products is unnecessary, right? It, no, I'm saying if it's not, if the the consequence is not innate, uh, okay. an innate evil. Sorry, okay, and so. Really would, we, so, uh, so you're saying that the 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 consequence of just, killing yeah, animals? Just because I want to kill someone doesn't mean I can kill them. Uh, like, but that's uh, innate evil. Like I can't do that. Right. So we we, we tout the the idea of freedom as being a, a, a liberty, um, freedom to um, autonomy being a big one, freedom to speech obviously, but also but more importantly freedom to um, a lack of exploitation. So when we consume, when we go into a, a supermarket now, and we buy a plant-based product our freedom's not being denied to us. But if we buy an animal-based product, then we've actively denied freedom to an animal. And an animal who is not an object would therefore be classed as a someone because they're individuals with, with sentience. So we've denied freedom to someone, whereas we've not denied freedom to ourselves if we buy those plant-based products. We've just merely accepted that sensory pleasure just is not a justification for harming sentient life. So my argument to that would be that these animals aren't necessarily uh, I forget the word I was going to use, but they aren't necessarily uh, as they don't have as much. Uh, so if you keep an animal in in its like, because your argument is that they are like unjustly like held and and they're taking these freedoms away and we're taking the freedoms away from these animals. Well, I would say that if, if we if, if in the US and where I'm from in the UK we, we hold freedom as being a pinnacle of yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. civilized and evolved society okay. then it's only fair that freedom be granted to others outside of that human centric viewpoint. Yeah, so like in the constitution it's freedoms aren't given to animals. But they also weren't given to all humans when the constitution was wrote, were they? Well now, the constitution now, I'm talking about the so present we're saying that we're saying that morality and, and views of, of what constitutes a civilized society can evolve and change. It's not, they're not ensouled beings though. They're not ensouled, so they don't have yeah. souls. This is, when, this is when it's become religious, so that's but why. There's it's no, no, there's there's no, no problem point. with that, but at the same yeah. time, um, a soul doesn't necessarily define worth of life, and it, even if we, even if if you believe in, um, that an animal is devoid of a soul, a non-human animal is devoid of a soul, that doesn't justify persecuting them or harming them. Just because they can't ascend to whatever afterlife we may go to, well, doesn't mean that in this life we're, we're then justified to cause them suffering. We're not. We're persecuting. We're not persecuting them as, and we're not just like holding them and like well, torturing them and stuff. Well, define without, persecution. Without, what does the word persecution so mean? So I you? think, I think that it's not persecution because if something's done for the uh, the happiness or the something's done to these animals because obviously you could say like oh you could do other things for happiness yeah. but something's done to these animals that I believe are less than humans mm-hmm. and I would I would think most people agree on that that uh, they're less than humans yeah. that if it's if it's uh, more if it's to make humans the more dominant and more important species okay. happy then that's justifiable so okay so i don't believe that to be vegan you have to place non-human animals in this, as the same level as humans it, you can believe that, that humans are of a higher being and they have a, a higher right to life and i'm not going to argue with you on that one but what i will say is, is that all we have to do is then we have to work out why it is that we consume animals and so if we're using taste as the cornerstone for why we consume animal products the question isn't are non-human animals the same as humans or are, do they have the same value as humans the question is do non-human animals have a higher value than our taste buds so the question really should be, what do you think is high value, taste or life? Taste. And, and then so Human then, taste. So, so you, 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 okay, so then we have to find a justification for that. And so by that, by that logic, you're saying that sensory pleasure morally justifies an action. No, I'm saying in the case of this, because but you have animals... To, but moral codes have to be applied Because if I said sensory consist- pleasure, then, I, then like, 
that's justifying like rape. Exactly, but but, but, this what, is, but that's taste not a, is, that's on another human. But taste is sensory pleasure. Yeah. So when you say that taste justifies taking life, you're saying that sensory pleasure is a morally just um, becomes a moral justifier. If the pursuit of sensory pleasure justifies an action, excuse me for spin, then every action that we as humans make becomes justified simply because we enjoy it. And that could become, I enjoy kicking a dog. And then that action of kicking a dog is justifiable because I find sensory pleasure from doing so. Yeah, no, I, I just, I disagree because the difference is, is that these, uh, like, I, like I just previously said, it's, I agree with certain certain sensory pleasures can be wrongs. But, well, so so to define so in, in your in your eyes taste is acceptable. So eating any animal is acceptable. Eating a dog's fine. Yeah. Okay. So eat, okay, if you want to so, eat a dog. Yeah. So we've got, uh, okay. Logical consistency is important. So okay. So we say that taste is a fine sensory pleasure. What about all the other senses? Uh, can we justify touch, sight, smell? Are they, are they also justifiable? Um, do they also provide moral justifications for actions? Moral justifications for actions? Just touch. I guess that, that would be the next big one. Touch. So it depends on, on what it's necessarily for, because there but, are innate evils that can be done with touch. But, we have to, but when, we, when we use arguments to, to create moral um, justifications, those arguments have to be able to be applied con consistently. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're not, they're not proper justifications. Yeah. They, they, they we're applying them yeah. somewhat disingenuously. So if, if, we, if we say sensory pleasure is, it provides moral justification because I enjoy the taste, we have to say that every action that provides us pleasure to one of our senses is justifiable because we've, we've condoned that action through taste. Mm -hmm but we don't believe that. So I'm not saying that it's necessarily justifiable because it tastes good. That's not why it's, that's not what makes it, uh, so, I'm saying, the issue is I'm saying yeah. that, I'm saying that it doesn't make it evil. I'm not saying it makes it good or necessary. I'm just yeah. saying that. Okay, true. Yeah, I don't believe they are evil for doing it. Okay, yeah. that, uh, just to make yeah, that clear, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that anyone who eats animals is evil. Mm -hmm. But 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 then if, if it's not taste, then what is your justification for eating animal products? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm just saying that I just feel like there's no way through through. Uh, so the taste, I'm using the taste as a reason, a reason that uh, humans like it. Yes, agreed. And, yeah, and so humans humans like the meat, and I'm saying that it's not wrong to eat these animals because and the reason is my reasoning isn't necessarily the taste it's the fact that we can do what we want with these animals because they are less than human so you believe that might makes right i don't know what that means so the idea that because we can physically impose our dominance we're then justified to do so no because i can physically impose my dominance on like a two-year-old okay well let's take humans out animals uh, uh, can we do anything we want to animals because we are a physically um, superior species anything that is for the that isn't an innate evil okay so but why okay. like is it is done for a good purpose i say but if we don't have to it's done for a good purpose it's done for a good purpose or define what or a, good a good not purpose. a not bad purpose so we got to define then what a good purpose and a bad so purpose a non-evil purpose so if it's done for the purpose of like then you could say like you could do sexual things with animals or like yes. torture animals yes. or something like that that's an evil purpose to to suffice an e or to but we could give just, yourself an evil yes or a bad uh, pleasure. It's an, but, there's there are bad pleasures. But why is like why the would, same reason a serial killer yes. gets pleasure from killing people? Right. That's bad because right. it's a bla it's a bad pleasure. Yes. So the pleasures you get from torturing things or killing thing or yeah. like killing humans, but yes. killing uh, so torturing or having I don't want to say it again. It was weird, but no, um, no, yeah, 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 yeah. So right. those are bad pleasures. Whereas, but why simply, is taste not a bad pleasure because, because taste, taste still comes at the, the victimization of the animal in the same way that um, in the same way that yeah, that but the victimization of the would. animal it doesn't matter because. But then why does sexually not, assaulting an animal matter? Then? Because they're not humans. But then so, so then we are allowed to no because the evil because the evil is in the, is in the uh, reasoning for the action. So. But, it, but if, if animals um, bear no moral consideration in the respect that we can kill them to eat them, and that's a, m a wrong action, then why, is, then, why is, then why is using an animal for sexual satisfaction any different? Because again, that's sensory pleasure. There's, there's taste satisfaction and there's sensory satisfaction. We could wear them, that would be visual satisfaction. So I, I think, uh, I think, so this is where religion's gonna come back in. Yes, of course, and that's, and that's so, absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah, so me, me being, because that's where you get morality from uh or a lot of your morality i mean there's innate moral things but yeah uh 
more of like a, a thing to point to, I guess you could say. Um, so I think certain pleasures are, are wrong simply because uh, you're doing it for uh, a wrong reason. And uh, like, so say, um, I'm just trying to think of a pleasure that I think is wrong that doesn't have to do with harming others. Uh, like, yeah, or, yeah, like, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's not like uncomfortable to talk about. You know what I'm yeah, I understand. It's <laughs> yeah, a tricky yeah, one. you know I'm what tricky. I mean? Because, well, I, screw it, who cares? Like, uh, masturbation or something like right. that. Like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Catholic, I'm a devout Catholic, so yeah. I think that that's wrong because of the. It's a ba- It's an evil pleasure. Mm-hmm. It's not done um, for a good purpose or a good uh, reason. Whereas, whereas this killing an a- or eating an animal for the pleasure of it, killing and eating an animal for the pleasure of your taste is not an evil thing. T- things tasting good, like eating dessert and having it taste good, but is not evil. But things feeling good isn't evil. It's the same thing, right? So I mean, if, if we. Yeah, I don't want to, obviously I'm not too comfortable to talk about it, no, it's fine. You're but like, good, obviously you're the feeling, yeah, right? You can so pick something we, else, we, I know. No, no, no it's weird. fine. But like feeling, so we've got essential, like they're all sensory pleasures, okay, that's the thing. And, and th- your religion is dictated, some sensory pleasures being justifiable and others is not. But I believe that to be, morality has to be applied consistently. And I, and I think, and I do want to, let's touch upon religion briefly, I'm not, I'm not here to, to yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, in any good. way dispute r- yeah, religion. Yeah, I know, you're fine. Um, but in terms of, uh, I think, Historically, we look at say, um, we look at Jesus, and we say, well, Jesus consumed animals, and, and the argument I'd make is that Jesus consumed animals in a time of necessity, where you know he didn't have whole foods to go and get some you know beyond meat burgers, right? Um, but society has progressed and changed so much, and one thing that we can all agree on, religious or not, is that the God you believe in would be a benevolent, compassionate uh, God, right? You know, mm-hmm. he, he wants to help and he wants what's best, and he's you know, he, so he's not in for any, humans. For humans, okay. Mm-hmm. But no, okay. I believe that he's a compassionate, a compassionate, and benevolent God, and I believe that if, if God is truly benevolent, then to inflict suffering onto the animals that He created on this planet would therefore be seen as a negative, negative to Him when that suffering is not necessary. But plus, also, you've got to consider that the animals that we consume, especially let's take the chickens, the pigs, the cows, are so conventionally consumed. These animals have been genetically modified and selectively bred. So a chicken will grow to slaughter size in six weeks. A dairy cow will produce 10 times more milk than they naturally would. And so what in essence we've done is we, we've taken God's creatures that he created and we've said, you know, good job, but not good enough. And so then we've selectively bred and genetically modified them to create them to fit our needs. And so in, in, a, in a sense, by, by this process of genetic modification, we, we've played God and we've tried to take the, 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 the act of creation upon ourselves, which I would probably seem to be quite blasphemous in a sense. And so the animals that we conventionally consume when we go into supermarkets are not God's creations. Um, well, they are, we just took them and made them better. I thought if God's perfect, then how can we make his creations better? He didn't, we're not making his creations better. There's things then on this just, earth. No, 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 no. Made his creations I know, better. because it's his creation. So why are we changing his creations? If God is, is perfect and he creates animals to be perfect, then why do we alter them to fit our own needs? Because they're perfect. Okay, so the thing and is... And why would God think that was acceptable? So it's not wrong. It's not wrong to change the way that an animal is. To Because like you said, people are changing. Things are changing throughout mm-hmm. time. So Morality changes. Evolution dictates... Morality, th- I don't think morality changes. But it, morality must change. because Why we, must it change? Well, I mean, when the Ten Commandments were drawn up, mm-hmm. slavery was still justified. Um, so, but morality changed since It was like then. indentured indentured servitude more like the are you talking about old testament slavery no, we don't no, even, no, we don't no, not even that i'm just saying that it, it, we got six and you know when was slavery abolished 300 years ago when was yeah it? so or in, even less than that in the right? ten commandments it doesn't say slavery is good it says that for not kill yeah, it does say that yeah, it, not kill. It's talking about humans. But at the same time, what I'm saying is that if, if, if morality was defined when the Ten Commandments came to be, then surely from that point onwards, everything that happened should have been deemed morally acceptable, but it, it simply wasn't. And to, to this day, we have not reached the pinnacle of moral evolution. And so we still have to look at our actions and assess whether it's to change. And that's not somehow anti-religion to try and change as a society. And it's not anti-religion to say that the Ten Commandments don't cover all of the moral laws that we should live by. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an acknowledgement that we as a species have the ability Ability to reflect and critically analyze our actions yeah. and I think that that's a, a liberating thing to understand that actually we have a form of autonomy that we would argue God has granted to us but that autonomy comes a responsibility to criticize and self-reflect God's not gonna dislike us for not harming animals 
if, if we come to the conclusion I as a society, would. I think you have the perfect right to be vegan if you want. I exactly. And so, so then if, it, so if, if God is neutral in the aspect of killing or not killing animals, then it comes down to more of a, a personal individualistic aspect. And so if, if we make the argument that God is neutral, then the religion aspect all of a sudden holds no credibility because it, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And so then we have to look beyond religion at other justifications. And so the question then becomes, how, how do you as an individual without, you know, without the, the mandate from God justify killing animals? Because it's, it's not a mandate. Oh no, I don't think, it, I never thought it was. Exactly, yeah. so if, if God is happy for you not to kill them, then, then why do you do so? If, if, if doing so causes suffering and harm to them? Because like I said, like, I don't really care about the suffering and harm of the animal. But why, why don't you? Because they're not human. But, but what, so what, what characteristics do humans possess? That souls. Means souls, okay. But, like, okay, so, uh, but as we said before, the, the transcendence to, to an afterlife doesn't justify the um, perpetuation of violence in this current life. And so just because a cow won't live out divine eternity in heaven doesn't mean they should be harmed in this life. Well, I don't think they should be, I think they can be. Okay, so define what you mean by... Uh, okay, so of course they physically can be. But because they're not in soul demons, I think we can use them to have whatever use we want. So the, okay, so then before when you said about it being wrong to sexually abuse an animal, well, then if we can use them in any regard that we want, then any action I that we think, commit to an no, animal I think, should be justified. I think having like sex or whatever without the purpose of having a kid is wrong so that's why I think that's wrong. Okay but I guess the point would be made that then if it's if it's if it's okay to, to eat an animal because they don't bear moral consideration because they don't have souls then again we have to apply that way of thinking logically which, which would mean that any action that we wish to commit to an animal would therefore be justified simply because they don't have a soul and if that's not true then that not means that no action can be justified. Not necessarily. So you either have to you either have to um, justify everything or justify nothing with that argument. And so if it's nothing, that means that, 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 that eating them isn't justified. No, because there can be two different things. It's not because the reason that having sex with an animal is wrong is not because you're inflicting any sort of pain or anything on them. It's because of the action that you're doing and the choice that you're making exteriorly from the animal. But, but, why, but why would that I, why would I that don't be care about the animal and the effect that that would have on the so animal. So why do you care at all about the action? Because I, I think that like I said before, like having okay. So let's let's take sex out because that, that becomes a religious yeah. matter. What about just um, what about just violence at all? If a dog walks past now, can I kick them and punch them because they don't have a soul? So that's what I said. Like fulfilling your exterior desire of hurting this this animal or beating or doing whatever to this animal that that is an evil desire inside is what makes it wrong. Not what not I, the pain that the animal. Feels. What if I beat them to death to eat them? I don't but have then, a, I then don't you're have a then knife. you're once again you're doing oh if you're beating them to death well, to eat them I want to eat the like, dog but I have no knife and so I just bludgeon them with the microphone until and then they eat them you're that, using the the uh, the minute to explain that like there I could go so it is wrong because I could go down the street and go get food that but so is it justifiable for me to bludgeon the dog with a microphone if the sole intention is to eat them afterwards where are you in this situation right here right now. Right, right. No, because you could you could go get something to kill the dog in a better way. Well, no, the dog's about to go, and I've, I've got to act now. So it, you got to act now. So is you it, want that specific dog it more than anything? Yeah, and kill it. Yeah. yeah. So so it's justifiable to kill an animal in a slaughterhouse, um, but it, therefore it's also justifiable to kill an animal in any means possible in, with any desire, as long as the end point is to consume them. As long as there is no yeah, as long as within you there's no, it's not to fulfill this desire of bludgeoning it as long as the bludgeoning it isn't what's but the, but so but the, the desire the comes as a it. consequence of bludgeoning and so the, the desire facilitates yeah, the, desi the need for the bludgeoning you're not you're not doing it for the purpose of fulfilling your desire of of bludgeoning the animal you're doing it to fulfill your desire of eating the animal but that but the bludgeoning is a consequence of that desire and so if the idea is that animals are warrant of no moral consideration then there should be no argument about what we can do there should be there should be no minute subtleties about what we as humans can do to them because no because i said like i said i can have my belief that doing the sexual actions or whatever is wrong regardless of 
but in, you could be doing it to an inanimate thing individualistic beliefs don't define a sense of what should be societally adopted you know we all have our individualistic beliefs some yeah. people think but that yeah, homosexuality is a sin some people think there, there are so many individualistic beliefs that society doesn't operate on, on, on the idea that everyone has a right to, to decide what they do and don't think is wrong there has to be some form of objective morality that we adhere yeah. to and that objective I, agree the, I just don't believe that it's objectively immoral to kill animals so but we have to so if in, in the absence, I guess, in the absence of religion, objective morality must be defined through whether or not an action has a victim who suffers. And there can be no denying that an animal is a victim who suffers. Yeah, but it's not human. It's, it's not a human who suffers. But, okay, so this is where I draw morality. I say that it's wrong to kill a human because humans are conscious, sentient, and have individualistic experiences of life that are unique to them, and they can suffer and feel pain. And so therefore, to be morally and logically consistent, I have to say that the exploitation of non-human animals is wrong as well because they are sentient, conscious, and have individualistic experiences of life that are unique to but them. But then my soul checkbox that you would need there is where we disagree. And so, but then we're doing, we're placing uh, the... the, the um, a faith, you know, a, a belief in front of what we know to be objectively true. And I'm not, as I yeah, said, I'm not I, going to question your belief in God, but what I am saying is what we objectively know to be true is that these animals feel pain, are, are sentient and conscious. Yeah. But we have no, there's no foundation other than, than faith, a culturally based faith to believe that an animal doesn't have a soul. And so then we're justifying killing trillions of animals mm -hmm. based on an individualistic faith that bears no scientific um, foundation. Well then we could argue for the like existence of God or whatever, but, but there's then, no point in that. But then, but and if, if I think there is scientific, I think if science supports the existence of a God, but if, then... So, so if we then take faith and we say that faith justifies an action, that means that any action that we want can be justified simply because we as individuals have faith in, in the, the moral... Um, but I'm not just, I'm just, I'm saying it's not an objective. I'm not objectifying it because of faith. I'm saying that it's not an objective wrong. If there's nothing, take away faith, it's not objectively wrong. But if you take away faith, then what else? If we take away faith from the equation, because then I think how it's, do we I think it's an morality? objective reality that animals don't have souls. But, but you can't even define whether it's an objective reality if we as humans have souls. This is the, this is the thing. When, when we're dealing with, with, I think with, with situations that have victims, we have to deal with what, it, what is, is, is obviously true to us. So what we know is animals suffer, they feel pain, they have families, they love their families, they have a desire to experience happiness just as we do. That, that's, not just that's, as we do. But to experience happiness, not, not experience happiness in the ways that we do, but experience happiness in the, in the essence that we wish to experience happiness. So not in terms of the actual pursuit of happiness, but the, just the intrinsic value of happiness they, they, they wish to, to feel the same But then way. like the previous guy said about insects, they uh, have desires and they want to eat like poop or whatever they but as we applied. established with the previous guy if we have a scale of consciousness and a scale of desire plants still come below insects and so the insects might be more justifiable than say the cows but the plants are still more justifiable than the insects and then i tell you where do you draw the line i draw the line at animals so if, if, if wait so you said insects are animals okay so you don't think we should kill insects then no if we don't have to i mean why if a squirrels wonder if they sorry if a spiders don't stamp on spiders but if they're right? basically like the like I, don't, I forget his name. Yeah. But uh, what, what was the word he used? Bi or biological oh, um, machines. Yeah, biological machines, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if they're basically biological machines that they don't really, they're, like you swat a fly, it felt nothing, it's gone, it's dead. But it's still, I mean, I, I just don't think that, that am I going to hold you as morally responsible as, as cutting the throat of a cow? No, but at the same time, if there's no necessity for us to do it, then just let them live. That's, that's the foundation of veganism. It's, it's a very simple foundation. It's just, if there's no necessity for us to harm an animal, then just, just don't. But then how the do you just, okay, so, so all the way back to the beginning, so so many people agree with you, it's obviously mm. not an objective it's not an objective wrong if a large, 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 large majority of people think it's okay to eat meat. But that's a false consensus bias based on the fact that just because the majority of people do something that's justifiable. Well, then I think, I think that yours is a false, bi or a false bias just because but based on you what? think... Because I think... It, it's okay to eat meat. I don't think they have souls. But, but you're, so if we're appealing, if we're making appeals to, to some sort of cognitive bias by saying, well, the majority of people do, it, that's, that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous mentality to have. I know. I'm no. I wasn't using it to necessarily justify the action. I'm saying. I, well, I'll finish my thought. I was yeah. going to say. Uh, so if how do you justify? forcing all of these people against their will like what i can't force you to do anything i mean when you leave now you can go and you can buy yeah no i'm saying like so say in your in your utopia like if you could change not your utopia so if if it was up to you you would say you're in had, an idealistic world right so i know but i'm just asking if you had your way 
way would you make it would you change the laws so it was now illegal and all these people were forced to do this i don't believe in in, in laws in, in terms of mandating people to to live in a certain way i don't i don't, okay. I don't believe I, I think that prohibition it ne hasn't never historically worked and, I, and that's why i believe in education awareness and i think okay. the only way that we can progress as a society is by helping people within that society understand why their progression is an imperative and so that's why i'm here today it's not to tell you that it's not to follow you to, to whole foods and watch you buy the tofu and then make you cook it at home yeah it's to say, look, there's an alternative way. I would never way. do that, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. There's, um, what I'm saying is there's an alternative way to live, okay? And it's through understanding that there is an alternative that we can make more informed decisions. But most of us have never thought about this. And we, we've heard of vegans, and we have ideas of what being vegan means. Yeah. But have we ever actually sat down and tried to rationalize the action? Most of us never have. And so, but, so if you think if I killed Brian Mercer over there, does he? Oh, <laughs> not Brian. <laughs> so if I kill Brian, yeah. you don't think that should be illegal? You think that like there should be no uh, yes, I, yes, governmental regulations? Yes, of course I do believe that there should be a punishment, but I believe that we need to foster a society where the notion of killing Paul Brian here isn't even on the table. Well, yeah, I know, but so if you think that I should get punished for that, yeah. then if that's an innate evil, so, like it's he's the same, he's sentient, he's all the stuff just yes. as animals yeah. are, how come I shouldn't go to jail. No, you should, but I don't believe that simply okay. mandating some, uh, creating a system of, of legal and illegal should define how we, we operate. And I don't believe that the solution to the problem of how we use animals is by making the action illegal. I think it's by showing people why it, it shouldn't happen. To, to the point where something doesn't have to be illegal for us not to do it. We just have this societal recognition well, you know, hey, let's let's leave those chickens alone and not cut their throats because I mean, it helps, like, else. having yeah. it helps, but murder it's, being illegal it's probably stops a lot of murders. Yeah, but it, So but it, why not make it illegal for animals too? Because then sure. it would stop a lot of animal murders. I, I, no, I agree, but it's an indictment of our of our species that that's the extent we have to go to. And so, yeah, if someone, if 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 say Trump, God forbid, he, he would never do this, but say he put you know a piece of legislation in front of uh, Congress, which was to, to ban farming, animal farming, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go and advocate and try and filibuster. I, I, I want it to be passed, but at the same time, I'd be disappointed that that's the extent we have to go to to help people understand that we don't have to and shouldn't harm animals. Okay, if that makes sense. All right. I Come understand. Yeah. What a great conversation. Right, yeah. Appreciate it very, thank very much. You, thank you. Have a lovely day and all, right. uh, all the best to you. you Appreciate it, man.